Hi everybody, welcome back to my Wednesday video blog series. I'm very excited about talking to you about performance and stress in the next few weeks because this is a big subject. If you've been around me in person, uh, been following my blogs and video blogs for a while, you know how passionate I am about the subject of high performance. That's why I pursue more education and research on the subject of human performance. And that's part of my brand actually now. So why talk about stress and performance? Because we know to be high performers, we're gonna be dealing with stress daily because we're pushing ourselves to excel, because we choose new projects, new adventures, or start a new business. So we're always stretching ourselves. So the key here is to train ourselves like we would train an athlete. When you're an athlete, you stress in your body. And we all know stress is the stimulus for all growth. You go through stress in order to grow, to get better, to get stronger, to succeed, to make more money, uh, to be in a successful relationship, whatever that is, we all know that we go through moments of stress. So what I want to be talking to you today in my next video blogs, it's how do we handle this stress with grace, like a spiritual warrior? And we stay in that zone of flow, the stage of flow, which is calm. We engage, we have fun with what we're doing. But we all know that it's not reality to stay always in that zone of flow. So I put here on my board a model that actually I took from the Bible of stress, this book called The Stress of Life by Sally. He wrote this book in 1956. He is the father of stress, if you will. He defined what stress was. He defined the response in our body, the mental response, emotional and hormonal response, and how stress can help us or make us very sick and unhappy. So in his model, he calls the stage alarm when you have that stress stimulus. Somebody caught you when you were driving your car or you got some bad news at work and some bad news at home, you're going to have a stress response immediately. Then if you don't deal with this stress response and you carry on for a long time, you're going through your period of stage of resistance. That stage of resistance is the stage that we actually adapt to this stress. And we have a tremendous ability to adapt to stress. In fact, I think a lot of people are so adapted to stress that they don't know how not to be in stress mode anymore. I actually heard a couple times this week people telling me that if they don't have enough stress in their lives, they're happy they need to look for stress. So that intrigues me. That's another conversation. But the adaptation phase is what we also call chronic stress state. And that's when we need to be very careful how we manage in stress. And our job is to go back as fast as we can to the zone of flow. Be calm and engage. When we're calm, we inhibit our brain from sending signals of fear and anxiety to our whole body. So there is a physiology factor there that should be a motivation for all of us to get back to that state of flow as soon as we can. The last stage that when you go from chronic stress from a long time and you don't address the stress, you can go into the stage of exhaustion. And the way that shows up is by um, stages of burnout, depression, very low levels of energy, and of course, any type of disease, disharmony, or discontent. So, I see many people in this stage of exhaustion. It's a very dangerous state. It's usually a state that, for some people, only um, serious illness can make them stop. So I don't want anybody there. I want to keep everybody in between these two zones because we're going to always have the alarm response. And, and the alarm response, when you have the stress, I can't help about not talking on emotional intelligence. So I want to talk about emotional intelligence because 
If you're in that stage of alarm, I want you to be able to stop right there and not go into a stage of chronic stress. So what do we do when that stress stimulus just comes upon us and it takes us, you know, by surprise? These are the two strategies I recommend you use. The number one, breathe. If you can remove yourself from a situation for a few minutes and close your eyes and take some deep belly breaths, the belly breathing is going to disengage the fight flight system or at least decrease the hormonal response that is going to come up like adrenaline, cortisol, and it might inhibit your ability to actually stay calm. It's going to trigger fear. It's going to tr trigger anxiety. So the sooner you can inhibit those responses from your body, the better it is. So belly breaths, even if you are in a situation that you cannot walk away, if you're in the office, you're having a meeting, you can't walk away, I would just pause and ask everybody to give you a moment. In that moment, two, three belly breaths, and with the thought of what I will say next, will my words help this situation to solve or make this situation easier? That's a great way to tap into your emotional intelligence and actually contribute to that situation, make it better, not worse. We all have the power to respond, how to choose how we respond to stress. Remember, Nobody, nothing, it's making us stressful. We choose a response towards stress. So at that moment of alarm, just pause for a few seconds and tap into your emotional intelligence. That is going to help you to handle stress with grace, which is a fundamental thing for optimal performance. If you want to perform, perform at optimal levels with high levels of energy and high levels of joy, you need to be able to handle stress with grace. So practice that. Remember, condition yourself, condition your mental state to handle things well is no different than exercise your body. So practice that every day. Pause, deep belly breaths, and it might get easier for you to handle your stress. Thank you so much, and I look forward to talk to you more about stress and performance next week.